Thanks very much. Thanks, Bruce. Uh, my name is David Ferguson, uh, 52. I've lived in more than 40 odd years, and uh, I'm going to present on behalf of Place. We had a really good people. I might get all the people who were in our group to stand up and just wave, so you know who is responsible for what I am going to deliver today. So I really, uh, it was a really good, uh, a good group, and there was an underlying theme of people who were interested and who care about our community and our place, and I think that came through. Uh, I, just a couple other thanks out of that was a thank you for Denise, our facilitator, uh, who never mentioned anything about a panel of interrogation at the end of your speech while she talked me into coming up here. Uh, Jody, thank you for offering the interpretive dance. We may well need it. I'll see how I'm going near the end. Uh, Helen, our scribe, who uh, worked uh, a MacBook, although she's never worked a MacBook in her life, and Piper, who was the youngest person in our group, who came forward and actually worked it for us and got it, got it to work. Thank you, Piper, and who presented this presentation up the top. Uh, I'll start with our goal, which is Warnable will be an even better place to live. So uh, the initial goal was Warnable will be a great place to be. But I think that it's important that we recognise we are doing pretty good already. And if you've, you've just seen the three acts ahead of me, and the, the, that saying of the hard act to follow is, wow, uh, the talent in this room that is spread through our community is fantastic. And so we want to try and make Warrnambool an even better place to be. Uh, as, and I think with the people that we've seen here today, we should be able to, to do that. Uh, our first priority is our place is welcoming, livable and thriving. Uh, the initial priority was a great place to be, which seemed to me to be what the goal was, so we swapped that around a bit. Uh, and we really want Warnable to be welcoming, and we, we borrowed it a little bit, I think, from the, from the people, people, place, uh, people people with this. We want it to be inclusive, but we acknowledged that we wanted to be thriving, and uh, that was about business and about people um, employing and uh, making money, and I, I was listening to the radio the other day and wages growth is flat and then a lot of what happens and what will happen in our place is if we're thriving and businesses can generate jobs and people will earn money and we can spend it back on our rates to get a lot of that other stuff that the other groups want to get done done. Priority two, we started out with affordable for all to live but we, there was a bit of disagreement about the word affordable. There was a concept or a belief there that it's a political word that politicians pull out all the time and it just gets banged on in your head, uh, and we just we gave that away, and we came up with provision for all to live. So provision was this theme, or this priority was predominantly about housing, and we've already heard a comment or two before about affordable housing, and people are happy, I think, very happy, if within their place they have somewhere to live. And that might not be in a four-bedroom, four-bedroom brick veneer in Wollaston, it might be in a smaller place, a larger place, a place with a group of other people, a group of similar people. And so we aimed there really, or our priority is that provision for all to live and to live in the manner that they wish. We had, uh, we had um, two priorities on our list and one was a great walking city and another one, priority four, was a great cycling city. Uh, we had a really good discussion around, well, you know, this and that's probably similar, let's pull that together. And so we came up with one priority being that our place is uh, an active and accessible city for all modes of movement in recognition of uh, not everyone's going to want to walk, not everybody can walk, not everybody's going to ride a bike, not everybody can ride a bike, not everybody's going to own a Tesla. I'm not sure what the sales figures were today. Where's the Tesla owners? He's gone, has he? He was plugging them a bit, so... Uh, but in the future, it's important that you can get from where you are to where you want to be and back and you can do that safely. And so that really is a priority for us, that uh, active and accessible city for all modes of movement. And that active bit was important. We had some debate around, well, 
cycling and walking, is that about uh, fitness and health or is that just about getting to work? And we think that that's about everything because obviously recreation is a great uh, part of our community. Uh, I'm thinking everyone would have walked on the promenade at some point in time whilst looking at whales. Uh, and so that's why we've gone for that priority. Priority five was connected public open spaces on our list. But we've chopped that down to just connected open spaces. We have some fantastic spaces. I'm not sure what the stats are around. Warrnambool has the highest percentage of open spaces as a city in the country. Bruce, is it something like that? Or? High, yeah. So we're blessed with that. And that's a real asset to us. But they're not, that's not connected. We talked about, you know, if you're at Reed Oval, how do you get to the beach? It's sort of, there's two roads to the beach. And not that I'm suggesting, or we, our group is suggesting we build a road through the middle of Lake Batau, but that's something that we really need to look at, that our open spaces are connected, so we can move between them on our different mood, modes of movement uh, and really uh, enjoy those open spaces, get out there and, and use them for what they are, for what we've been blessed with by our forefathers. Our forefathers. Priority six was, uh, again, uh, about spaces, but public spaces, and I'm sure the, the Bruce and the councillors know all about public spaces because they're probably the biggest provider of public spaces. But we really were looking for and discussed quality in our public spaces in the future. Again, I think we, we do pretty well now. We've, we've got some good facilities, but making our place livable and uh, welcoming and thriving is about providing those public spaces. And one of the ideas that come up was about uh, community hubs where if you've got a particular business that you're running, uh, a micro business with your Uber app or something similar, that there's a space and a desk and a spot where you can sit down and do that and do those sort of things. So uh, also there we talked about uh, cultural and art and indigenous space as well. Uh, and someone said to me Did you know, uh, that all along Thunder Point and all that way around there, that's all indigenous country. And I, I, I didn't know that. I should know that. We should have those sort of signs there and we should have that interpretation. So to, uh, to wrap it up, that was our six, uh, five priorities. We started with six, we started with a couple of different ones, we've changed it around. But uh, we've put up a map there of Australia, with a little dot on where we are, and that's our place. And in that first priority, we've used those words, our place. So this is our place, and, and I think that's shown through in everything I've seen today, is that we care about our place, we love our place, and we want our place to be better in the future. And hopefully uh, through this process, we can achieve that. Cheers. given to provision of services 24 hours rather than the limited time that we have in 2017? Uh, no. <laughs> would you consider that? Yes, yeah, I would. And I will because I'm a shift worker. So I work two days of 10 hours, I two work two, hour, two nights of 14 hours, and I sleep a fair bit because I'm knackered. So um, it would be fantastic to have that sort of thing. It's a relevant point. And, uh, 24-hour service, is it sustainable, I guess, is the question. So that, that always is the thing, because I know the world runs, or has run around 9 to 5, Monday to Friday in the past, but as our speaker this morning said, there's people whose businesses run from 9 to 10 and 4 to 6. So maybe that's a point that the, the people who implement these things need to take up. Yeah, good point. More and more part-time or shift work. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to start with the hard one. <laughs> Have you considered amending building codes to ensure lower environmental upset and greater interaction between community residents, or to meet a greater diversity of accommodation needs to prevent homelessness and inaffordability? Uh, building code, no. Uh, the other stuff about affordability, uh, as, as I mentioned, where we changed that second priority to provision, we, we discussed that comprehensively, and there was a lot of passion around that about how people want to live in the future. And, and, uh, uh, whether I think we, this morning everyone had their hand up and we had a spare bedroom. So we did talk a lot about that and I think there's a lot of work that can be done in that space around how we build and why we build. We talked a lot about, and I haven't mentioned it, we talked a fair bit about the sprawl of Warrnambool and that if you look at the modelling of Warrnambool, it looks a bit like Melbourne in Mini with houses going out that way and houses going out that way. And do we need a better boundary? And do we need density? Do we need to re redevelop what we already have with respect to the 
history and the culture and some of our buildings, but can we reuse those buildings better or can we just knock them down and build smaller, more compact, more usable buildings in the future? Yeah, so we did talk about that, yeah. Did you come to any conclusions? Uh, no, not really. Our two rivers, uh, we give Warrnambool a really strong sense of place. Um, back in 2020, um, we had a couple of major outbreaks of blue-green algae uh, because of reduced stream flows. I apologise for this other question. That's all right. Um, what did Council do um, to reverse that process? I mean, you know, it's really bad. The blue-green algae was bad for two years. It affected our brand. It affected our tourism. Well, local residents were really up in arms because they, you know, they couldn't use the rivers as they previously did. Um, obviously, council have done some fantastic work because now we haven't we haven't had an outbreak for ten over ten years. I'm curious to know what council did. Well, I think first of all, some of that blue green algae nut stuff was fake news. <laughs> fake news spread by people who uh, media who uh, had different agendas to council. And so I'll dispute that, fake news. Um, I've got nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> I think really you're right. As Dr. Sherwood said before, that we're, we're getting reduced rainfall, or reduced flows down the river, so we're probably stuck. That's probably going to happen. And um, it's not nice. So um, if anyone's got any good ideas, bring Bruce. Love that, but now moving forward to 2040, I'm now 67, I'm run down to the street from out west because I'm fit, and uh, I've got the buzzing drones over me, I want to know who I report the buzzing drones to, but there's recently you've discovered um, some shipwrecks in the, in the area, in our vicinity. I just want to know, um, what do we do with them? Where, where are we going to display them? How are we going to get the tourists? To Warrnambool, what's is there going to be a Flagstaff Hill with some real shipwrecks and the whales? And uh, the shipwrecks made of mahogany. <laughs> there was a, another one discovered. <laughs> okay, right, I'll do my best. Uh, drones is CASA, I think, Civil Aviation Safety Authority. Yeah, try them if they still exist, if they haven't been made redundant. Uh, interesting question. I sometimes look at Flagstar Hill. I was there the other day actually picking my daughter up. She'd been to summer's camp. We had to pick up. I'm looking over the top and thinking, yeah, I don't know. You just don't know sometimes about Flagstar Hill. Sometimes it's our flagship and sometimes it seems just a need of it, doesn't it? And um, so the future, certainly in my mind, tourism is, that's been a theme. Tourism around several of the groups and in our group, tourism was a theme. Uh, how you encompass that, whether, it, um, I don't know, Civic Hall could probably make a museum. They seem to be getting bigger and bigger. They took over the old post office. And Quest is under the pump, I think. So maybe when they move out to an even bigger place, we could put the uh, put the uh, the shipwrecks down at Civic Hall on the Civic Green. So how are we wanting to attract our visitors here? I think if we make our place welcoming, livable, and thriving, uh, I think if we make it active and accessible, I'm just going to sell our priorities here. Uh, if we connect our open spaces and if we have public quality spaces, I think now um, our recreation and sports stuff attracts people. Maybe we need more of that other public open or public spaces to attract people. Would there people. be a bullet train or an airport? Possibly. Hopefully, V Line don't run it. Um, because of uh, Warrnambool being such a livable community in 2040 and the, uh, the health and wellbeing of the community is exploding, everyone wants to come to Warrnambool and the population has just gone ballistic, exponential. Um, there is some quarters, developers, that want to go up high, build high or high rise buildings. Um, what are you going to do about it? I think it would stop them. What would you what would you build instead? Lower rise. <laughs> I think it's efficiency, isn't it? It's efficiency of space. Like uh, I'll share some of myself. I live in a big house, 
and I'm paying for a big house, but uh, if I was really efficient, I'd probably live on a quarter of what I had to do. And that's maybe a mindset, you know, it's, it's, and maybe that's pressures of the world as we grow and learn and discover more. And, and maybe that's a question for the younger people who, because, yeah, I probably won't care as some of the other groups said in 2040. But the challenge, um, maybe we try it. We, we build one and see where it does. It's there forever then. Right? But, um, we could put a wind tower on top of it. One final question. <laughs> so what spe specific criteria did you base your goal of affordable being livable off? Uh, for me, I, I based it on what I get now out of one Okay, I, so I, uh, I can get on my bike and ride to work in six minutes. Uh, I can walk to the shops. Uh, safety worries me a little. I'd like to see it safer. Um, my wife's employed. Uh, my daughter goes to a great school with fantastic activities. Uh, and I think that continues, but with the necessary development for technologies and changes in lifestyle and changes in the environment, that that's livable for me and for us. Thank you. And thank you to the panel. Thank you.